Is it the right screen now? No. No, okay, now, the... now, no, not yet. It jumped and it okay. came back. Sorry about that. Now. Okay. So, hi, everybody. So, I'm Alexi. I'm a postdoc in the group. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, the true treat capability of the test bed and uh, how we recently have benchmarked those true treat capabilities. Capability. So um, this is the eight transmogram quantum processors that you have seen in uh, the last talk. Uh, this quantum processor was designed with qubit in mind uh, and the idea that we want to do a quantum processor with qubit. But uh, as we know, uh, qubit is an approximation and each of the qubits are actually transmon and transmon is a multi-level system. And so what we did here is that we just use one extra level compared to the qubits to make it into a Q-tree. So why would you want to do that? So just a quick calculation, if you look at this, as this chip, as a qubit chip, you, you have a, a Hilbert space of 250 something. But now if you look it at eight Q-trees, the Hilbert space is now 6,000 something, which is like, way larger. So there is clearly an advantage in the Hilbert space to use Qtrit rather than Qubit. And so this advantage actually um, has already been shown in several experiments. So there is, I, I think, I, I like two ways to present it. There is like the idea of trying to have a uh, gate for Qubit system made with Qtrit uh, hardware. And this is, for instance, the example with the Toffoli. So the Toffoli gate is at the core of a lot of algorithms for quantum computing, but it's something which is very demanding on, um, on the number of signals. So if you, if you want to implement a Toffoli gate on one of our chips, because we have a linear topology, you need something like eight C0, which is a lot. And so there is this idea that by using uh, the extra level, you are able to construct more compact uh, in, in the sense that it requires less entanglement gate uh, you can construct such uh, Toffoli gate with less entanglement gate. And this has been already demonstrated experimentally. Uh, more recently in the group, uh, there have been a work that you will hear uh, right after me by uh, Professor Block, uh, where the idea is to use directly Qtrit uh, as, as a basic tool of the algorithm. And recently there have been uh, this paper where they demonstrate the scrambling of uh, information in a black hole using uh, Qtrit. And this experiment can be done with a qubit processor, but require uh, more qubit and also uh, more entanglement gate. So wh what happened is that during this work on, the, on this uh, algorithm using Qtrit, we realized that we needed a way to assess the performance of a Qtrit processor uh, in order to compare it to a qubit processor. Uh, and this is uh, what I'm going to talk uh, now. So I will try to show you how we perform uh, gate, like Qtrit gate on a processor. And then I will show you how we generalize randomized benchmarking, which is now the industry standard to assess the performance of a quantum computer to Qtrit. Uh, I will talk first on the single Qtrit gate, and then I will talk about uh, the entangling gate, uh, the CSOM. Uh, and I will show that we have used uh, just a, a tweaked version of randomized benchmarking, which is a so-called cycle benchmarking. And I will try to explain why we choose this solution. Okay, so it, when you try to uh, to construct like single qubit pulse, what you do is that you you send a tone at the transition frequency between the zero and the one level, and by calibrating the time of your pulse and the uh, and the amplitude of this pulse, you are able to construct uh, an arbitrary. Like you are able to construct a, a zero one transition or a pi over two gate. Uh, and then after what we do is that we use this uh, so-called virtual Z gate, which is just a software arbitrary phase in order to construct an arbitrary qubit unitary. Now we can do exactly the same by uh, allowing us to address the second transition of a transmon. And by using a construction which is very similar to the one uh, of for qubit, we are able to generalize this and have arbitrary qubit unitary using this virtual Z gate. So what this means is that we have universal control over a single qubit. So now the question is, okay, you have universal control, but how well, uh, how well is your control? And so for this, as I was saying, the solution, uh, like it's been recently, there have been a lot of effort and, and it's been shown that randomized benchmarking is uh, the way to characterize this, uh, to answer this question. And so here is the idea of randomized benchmarking. So you just generate a random sequence of, n Clifford gate, 
and you invert it at the end with a single gate. So by doing so, what you effectively do is that you are just doing applying the identity. And in the ideal world, uh, you will have identity and you will find back zero when you measure. But no, because our processor I know the, uh, what happened is that this is not exactly the identity. And because you are choosing the Clifford gate set here, you will have an effective depolarization as you average over all those random sequences. And and you will end up like the more depth you go you will end up in what's called the maximally mixed state where you have no information left which is but what's nice about this technique is that you will fit this curve with a single exponential decay and because it's a single exponential decay it will be very accurate and also because we are fitting this exponential decay we are insensitive to what's called um, state preparation and measurement error and which is like you want to be um uh, you want to not have this kind of error when you assess the performance of a quantum computer. And that's what why ARB was constructed for. Uh, so here, because you have, we have a Qtrit without, we are actually able to measure the leakage of this kind of uh, qubit gate during, while doing the randomized benchmark. So this is for qubits. So now what do you do when you do Qtrit? So you can do the same ID on the other, subsp on the other two level subspace uh, that you have in the Qtrit debate space. And, but what happened is that, as you see here, the curve, like the decay curve, become much more complex. So what happened is that the randomized benchmarking sequence still depolarize the noise in the subspace where you apply the randomized benchmarking. But no, the leakage out of this randomized benchmarking subspace become uh, very strong. Uh, and so now you have a, a two decay, one due to the randomized benchmarking and one due to the leakage out of the computational subspace. And so no, you cannot, you don't have a number that you can compare to qubit uh, processor and also you lose accuracy due to this uh, extra 2 decay. So the solution for this issue is to change the group from which you are sampling your random gate and use the Clifford uh, group for qubit rather than the word for qubit. So what happened is that it's a very general property of the Clifford group is that if you use the right Clifford group you will fully depolarize your state. And so this is what we obtain here by applying this Qtrit randomized benchmarking. You see that no, the population in the state one and in the state two are equal, meaning that we are actually depolarizing in the Qtrit sense. And so we can also plot this uh, using just, we can just plot like the depolarization channel and we see that we really have a single exponential decay. So, but just by doing this, we really have developed uh, a Qtrit randomized benchmarking, which gives numbers that we can compare to qubit uh, processor. And so just here as the numbers, the average infidelity that we have measured on our five Qtrit chip uh, is about 310 to the minus three. Okay, so uh, now we can maybe try to go a bit further into the analysis. Uh, of our gate sets. So we can use one application of the randomized benchmarking, which is interleaved randomized benchmarking. And the idea is very simple. You just had the gate that you are interested in every other gate. And by doing so, you will be able to, to characterize a specific gate. And so this is what we have done. And we have tried to, we have tried several gates of interest. So our native gate, which you see have a uh, small error, but we also have tried to characterize the Qtrit Adamar gate, which is also the quantum Fourier transform for a three-level system. And we have pretty decent uh, uh, fidelity for those gates. Okay, so this was for, was for single Qtrit system. So now what about uh, entanglement? So <clears throat> you will heard about this a lot more in the next talk, so I will be brief, but in our chip we have uh, a C sum, which is the generalization of the C naught, and which is depicted here. It's, it's exactly the same as the C naught, but for the Qtrit logic. Uh, and we have constructing it using an always on coupling between adjacent transmen. And here is a full pulse, se pulse sequence that we apply. So, one of the issues of this gate is that it's a very long gate. And control because we are at, uh, at the early stage of Qtrit development, this gate is not as high fidelity as the qubit entanglement one. And so now if we want to characterize uh, this gate, uh, there is a, a challenge because first you have Qtrit and then you have a, a small um, fidelity. So, so what we can do, uh, this was the first idea, is try to use interleaved LB. But what happened, because interleaved LB will 
uh, make a single exponential decay. But what happened is that if you use it, each of the trailing gate, which is the gate of the random sequence, have to be a uh, two Q-treat uh, Clifford gate. So each Clifford gate will be made of several CSOM and will make it hard to have a, a very, like a sequence with enough depth uh, to fit an exponential decay. Another issue for us was that the number of Clifford in the two Q-treat group is actually enormous. There is four million of Q-treat gate. And so you need, uh, you need, uh, you need to have a construction for all of those Clifford gates uh, based on the seesaw. And there is also the question of how this kind of protocol can scale to more than two Q-treat or, I mean, even for Q-treat, there, no, there is no experimental, uh, there is no experiment that was done with more than three qubits. So we think this is hard to implement and it will be hard also to move on after. So instead of this, we have, uh, we have tried something which is called cycle benchmarking and which was developed recently here. Um, and the idea is instead of using the Clifford trailing, you use the poly trailing. So it's really nice to use the poly trailing because now the trailing gates are just single q treat gates rather than, uh, rather than uh, entanglement gates like uh, before. Um, and it's been proven to be scalable. It's very easy to scale to more q treats uh, so this is a good point. Like the, 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 uh, the inconvenient of it is that you will end up, if you just do this poly twirling, you will end up with multiple exponential decay. And this is solved in this article by just randomly sampling from random preparation here and um, applying this measurement protocol here. Um, so for more detail, you can look at this paper, but we have generalized this ID to Q-treat uh, and we have applied it to uh, our system game. So here you see that this is really important is that we can now measure each of the poly decay given by the cycle benchmarking and we have really a single exponential decay. So we just fit a single exponential decay for each of the poly channel. And this is like all the poly channels that we have fine for our CSOM gate. And if we average all those, we have the average fidelity of our CSOM gate, which is about 0 0.82. And, and this is it. So with this, I hope that uh, I've convinced you that we have Q-treat capability on the test bed and uh, that we are now able to, uh, to assess the performance of those Q-treat processor using uh, the random match benchmarking technique. And we are now looking into trying to improve this gate in order to, have, uh, to be able to run a better algorithm. And with this, I want to thank the full group and uh, I'm leaving the floor to Makil, which will continue to talk about Q-treat. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Uh, 